Well, thank you all for coming. Great to see uh, such a nice crowd. Uh, as Dave mentioned, this actually is the third of uh, a series of three on Lake Boone, the first one on the dam and uh, Amory Maynard and that sort of thing. The second one was uh, murder, Bayhem, that sort of thing. And because the Lake Boone Association forgot to have a tour of the lake this year in a boat, I thought we'd do it uh, digitally. So that's kind of the, uh, the approach that we're doing tonight. Uh, a couple of real quick comments. <clears throat> one of the reasons, one of the principal reasons I do this is to raise awareness of the historical societies. Now, I live in uh, Hudson, and there's another town over there that crossed the way, those guys, <laughs> across the way, and I guess they have an historical society as well. But nevertheless, uh, if you have experiences, I would love to interview you. If you have pictures, we would love to copy them. If you have documents, anything relating to Lake Boone, uh, we would love to get our hands on it. And through the efforts of Lou Halperin, who's uh, in the back doing videoing, uh, we have now a Lake Boone corner in the Historical Society in Hudson. And we've already amassed a good deal of information, lots of pictures, you'll see some of them. Uh, documents, uh, we've done, I've done probably eight or ten interviews, oral interviews of old timers. And as you know, that stuff is fading. Time takes care of that problem. So uh, we're trying to capture it before it gets totally away from us. Well, I thought a lot about this and trying to come up with a title, Summer Retreat for those of us uh, who sort of grew up here in uh, the old days. Uh, it was a summer retreat. We came here for the summer and then many of us, uh, Labor Day, we'll see this, got in the car, literally Labor Day noontime after the races were over, off to wherever, usually back towards the city. Uh, and those days are long gone, we'll comment on it, uh, and it's now really turned into suburbia. That's one way to think about it. The other way, and I thought it was kind of a boring title, so uh, I spent a lot of time going around the lake and thinking about this, and in the old days the lake was clubs, canoes, and porches. No more. It really is decks, fences, and pontoon boats. I made a count of uh, boats around the lake last week, uh, motorboats. Now, some were taken out, but it's probably pretty accurate, and I came up with about 165. Guess how many were pontoon boats? 80%. Well, it's high. About a third. third. A third. They, they seem dominant because they're big, and they're slow, and they're obvious, and blah, blah, blah. But nevertheless, okay, well, here we are from canoes to pontoon boats. Oh, this was wonderful. Connie will, will see this. Cheryl here? No, she's in California. Oh, of course. People who do anything to avoid coming. And uh, from Dex, wonderful old postcard from 100 years ago to Dex. Okay. I'm actually going to zip right along because I've got a lot of stuff, um, but nevertheless, uh, we need to credit uh, especially Alan Cattell, who I believe really sort of started this idea of doing this, uh, and I guess I'm his unworthy uh, successor. Uh, Don Hawks, we grew up together and did a lot of stuff and talked a lot about this, and of course Lou in the back uh, has been very helpful. A lot of stuff from the towns, and this here as Rosemary will tell us, is the Facebook of the day. The old newspapers had a Lake Boone Notes section every week. Tons of stuff, who came, who went, where they were from, the cottage names, we've lost that. 
uh, and uh, so forth. Uh, you'll see a lot of pictures. I, I tried to redo repeat photography is the technical term. I tried to repeat some of the earlier photos. This is a serious problem because the trees have grown up. If you've gone around the lake, it's remarkable. It's very even growth, probably about 100 years. And some of the old, old pictures, Dutch, you'll appreciate this, uh, the land was almost bare. And now it has grown up. So, and that made it a little difficult doing repeats. <laughs> Speaks for itself. <clears throat> OK, well, just to get familiar, and I'm sure that most of you are probably quite familiar with it, uh, it's a USGS map of the lake. Uh, here is the uh, first basin, the second basin here, uh, the third, and fourth <laughs> basin. I don't hear that. Yeah. Watch out for this guy. He lives down there in that, the stumps. The stumps. Yes, indeedy. OK. Uh, and of course, this is the uh, premier town here of Hudson. And then there's uh, 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 oh, Stowe over here. Uh, Barton Road runs up along the uh, west side. Uh, let's see. And what we're going to do, I tried as if it were a, uh, uh, you were in a boat going around. I cheated a little bit because we get off the boat, go onto the land a little bit. But we're going to start here at the dam, which essentially back this up. That's what we talked about in the other presentations. Pine Point, we'll go around Pine Point Road, Hanson's Beach. For those of us who grew up here, there is no other name for that. Uh, the Bluffs, the Parker land down through here, and we have the Parkers very well represented tonight. Uh, the Narrows. Uh, when anybody says Narrows, I think it's always between the first and the second, even though there is Narrows here. Uh, not often done. A uh, little bit on the North Shore, uh, the Stump area, Lakeside, and Hunter Ave, Monaghan's Cove, and so forth. And that's kind of the uh, sequence of what we're going to look at. Uh, Stowe Town Beach here. We'll talk a little bit about the background to that. And the public access over here, uh, donated by Bob Dawes, very civic-minded, thank God, uh, large landowner down here. Uh, just a little stick map to uh, place it. Here is, uh, here is the Assabet River here, flowing southwest to northeast. Uh, Hudson over here, Marlboro further down. Gleasondale, Maynard. Uh, we have two of a number of impoundments emptying into the river. Fort Meadow, of course. Uh, Lake Boone. And uh, the Ben Smith Dam, if you know 117 in Maynard, where the river crosses, standing on that, you can look a little upstream and see the Ben Smith Dam, which is critical because that backed up the water. There was a little canal, which still exists, uh, goes under uh, 117, and uh, fed the uh, mill pond, which, of course, uh, ran the, uh, the mill, the major mill. And that's how it works. OK, very early map, uh, before 1800. And Lake Boone existed as a natural pond, but very small. This says 70 acres. I know it's a little hard to read. It's Boone's Pond, 70 acres. Don't want to get into, was there an E or was there not an E on Boone? There, uh, that's uh, chasing your tail. Uh, but uh, feeding this was uh, Ramshorn Brook, which did approximately this. And that's the best I could do, just trying to superimpose la uh, current Lake Boone on the early map. Here is another map a little later. Uh, here is the Assabet, called the Elizabeth River here, going off through Stowe into Maynard. Here is the lake. Uh, here is Marlboro. And Stowe. Uh. <laughs> Where's Hudson? Well, Hudson wasn't formed until 1866. Next year is our centennial. Uh, it's a big deal. 
uh, next year. Uh, so Marlboro and Stowe came together, but notice Boone's Pond here, and uh, we can blow that up a little big, little bigger. Uh, here is what will become Sudbury Road. Here is the river, the dam, Bailey's Brook, and so forth. But this road here becomes interesting. We mentioned we've mentioned it before. I'll just note it now. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, up here, uh, as you're going up Sudbury Road. Uh, there is uh, Mr. Menser. He will figure in our story here in just a moment. Okay, well, let's look at some fun stuff. Some, a lot of these old pictures are absolutely idyllic. This is the dam, and this is Boone Hill. There is a major problem in trying repeat photography, and unless you have the cameras that were used in those days and the lenses, it's very difficult to uh, get it exact right. It just doesn't work. Interestingly, and I do this uh, for Hudson as well, a number of shows there and trying to get repeat stuff there. Buildings appear much larger in the old days than they actually are. It's just an artifact of the lenses. That's all I can tell you. But nevertheless, uh, it's about the best I could do now. That's approximately it. And one of Stowe's more distinguished couples are over here. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but this is what enlarges Lake Boone from its 70 acres in the old days once two dams were established, we talked all about that before, so we won't go into it, uh, to its current size of about 160, 165 acres, depending on how much swampland you want to include in that. Uh, this dam was recently renovated in 2000, and it's uh, quite new. But I will tell you, it's lower, and you can see why it is when we get to Pine Point, lower than the previous dams before it. But nevertheless, nice picture. OK, well, we're going to take a boat ride. Uh, I think we better wait for the next boat. <laughs> this is the Princess. This boat was uh, captained by uh, Alan <laughs> No. Alan Cattell's father. Yes. Yeah, Alan Cattell's <laughs> father, Larry Cattell. And uh, if you, you can rest comfortably, this is from the Selectman's Minutes in Hudson. And license granted to Bolam uh, as owners, hereby granted to Bolam and Mitchell, owners of the of Lawrence Cattell, captain of the gasoline launch, carrying 50 passengers on the lake, 35 preservers. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, Mr. Historians, what's the significance of that fact with that date? Two years before Titanic, which essentially changed everything. Okay. Uh, you could, there was, there was uh, tickets and uh, a schedule. Uh, they left what will become Hanson's, 715. 15 minutes up to Cove Landing, uh, which we know is Monaghan's. Came over to Lakeside, took two minutes, and then went back. There were other stops in between, especially if you're out in the dock waving, and uh, he had room, pick you up. If you didn't, I guess you swam. Okay, well, we are up on Boone Hill. Looking down, Barton Road's going to be off to the right, and the dam is here, looping around. Uh, this is not the Moondyne. Uh, that is the house next to you, Dot. And uh, I call your attention to a couple of things. One is no trees up here. We've got other pictures. It's a cornfield. Uh, here are the bluffs over on the other side. This certainly uh, turns into the Parker land. And then we have these two distinguishing houses. Uh, this is West Point. And this one here is particularly interesting. There it is. We're stand this is the dam. 
This is the damn road right here, okay? And this is uh, West Point, and this is called Fair Haven. Very interesting building. It was originally a building on what is now Honeypot land. Uh, they didn't want it there. It was chopped into three pieces, carted down over Sudbury Road in the winter, skidded across the ice, put back and glued together, and there it is. You may not recognize it in that iteration. That's the same view. You see the problem? You probably know it better that way. One of the absolute most charming cottages on the lake. OK, sorry for a little bit of history, but this period around 1850 was crucial for the lake. A bunch of things happened. Philip Menser died uh, of smallpox. We'll see his grave in a minute. Fitchburg Railway came very early. 1850 is awfully early. Maynard is active in the 1840s. Thoreau trots over from uh, Concord. Uh, let's see, George Barton marries Emma Beattie. Emma Beattie, the Beattie farm is now on the land uh, we know it as Honeypot. And George Barton, born in Sudbury, North Sudbury, uh, very famous geologist, one of the first MIT geologists. Um, and they settle on Boone Hill, hence the Barton land, and they get connected up with Eastman. Uh, Maynard develops the second dam, in a, in a, I, I figure 1864. The problem is, as you read through this stuff, they get licenses or permits for dams, and you assume they then built the dam at that time. But there's no documentation that says, oh, we just built the dam yesterday. It doesn't seem to work that way. So, but we know there were two. Uh, let's see. Any, oh. Kachichuit Water Board, I'll just mention it quickly. Why in the world was Boston interested in Lake Boone? A long story, we went over it last time. It was as a compensating reservoir. Uh, for those of you who know Framingham and the Kachichuit Water Works over there, all of that stuff, that's on what river? The Sudbury. This is the Assabet. Well, when they developed that, the people downstream on the Sudbury said, hey, wait a minute, you're going to screw us. So the Constituent Water Board bought the water rights from Lake Boone to shunt water down the Assabet to uh, make up for whatever water uh, they were deprived by the Sudbury. They never used it, sold it back. Uh, you perhaps recognize this. This is Sudbury Road, Lakewood. What's in here? Oh, here we are. Just as you turn in. You see this little private cemetery. And Mr. Menser is buried here, and he died of smallpox in 1845. The town uh, would not permit him to be buried in Forest Vale, I guess, uh, probably because they didn't want the residents to catch smallpox. Who knows? But at any rate, there it is. OK, well, let's, uh, let's look along Pine Point. An early picture, we're presumably standing on the dam. Houses seem to have grown over time. Some of them are still pretty original. These two, anyway. Uh, you'll see these again in a minute. Here's another view. Uh, this is uh, Pine Point. Notice how low the water is. Uh, very likely, this was taken at a time when the flashboards in an earlier dam were pulled so that water could go flow down the Assabet. Uh, by this time, they probably had electricity, probably to do washing of the uh, woolen. OK, well, here we are. This is quite an early photo, uh, since there are no houses. And this is sometime in the 1890s, when uh, Colonel Jackson uh, had that built. 
Well, this is halfway on Pine Point. Notice the uh, hill, which is all forested now. The Arlington and the Radcliffe. In the old days, I keep saying old days, every cottage had a name. It was the street address. That's how you knew where things were and how you were referred to. And we'll see a lot of this as we go along. Uh, actually, this one is quite similar, as is this one. Uh, this is the old Arlington. This one carries Lake Boone. Well, that's interesting because it was called the Radcliffe. Uh, interesting story there, which we will mention in a moment. That sign does not denote the early name of this cottage, however. Uh, one of Stowe's more distinguished citizens lives here. He happens to be in our midst. He is doing the videoing in the back. Thank you, Lou. Okay, uh, if any of you are familiar with Pine Point, there is the famous sandbar uh, towards actually the point itself. Uh, the water was really quite low here, very difficult to find exactly the spot. Uh, and that's pretty much the best I could do. Michelle and Shane. Is Michelle here? Uh, couldn't make it. Uh, a year or two ago, uh, I was trying to do some depth measurements, and I got Shane to uh, get the uh, thing. And it's only about three, three and a half feet of water. They're about 170 feet out. Very similar. Well, of course, one of the uh, classic houses Cottages, sorry, on the lake, still very much just like it was. Fortunately, not been modernized to the point of being unrecognizable. Inside as much as out. Had the pleasure of going through, still in the Jackson family. Uh, wonderful house, wonderful house for kids uh, because they have sort of added things and rooms and especially upstairs here, you climb through what would have been a window or a door, it's half a window, and it's just little rooms around, just an ideal place when you're five or ten years old. They will remember it forever, uh, a house like this. Uh, Colonel Jackson uh, led the Marlboro Volunteers in the Spanish-American War, which was when? Eighteen ninety-eight. You remember that, Vic? Yeah, I think he does. Uh, built his house and uh, developed a lot of houses around here. This is an early photo. Notice how high the water is. Well, uh, keep that in mind. I took this picture this afternoon. In order for the water to be that high, This is about five feet here. So if this went up five feet, it would go over the top of the dam, the current dam. So there's an adjustment that's been made here. Uh, classic porch. This is in the Jackson house. Wonderful, wonderful view. OK, well, that's here. We're moving around the corner. Uh, this is still Pine Point Road. Quite a number of cottages. This is obviously an early photo. Very hard to tell. Many of the photos that we have carry no date and no location. Uh, so you kind of have to guess at it for whatever clues we've got. Houses definitely have gotten larger. OK, that was here. We're moving around to what most of us would think of as Hanson's Cove, Hanson's Beach, on the very north end. It's a very early picture from probably somewhere, give or take, 1910, uh, because this building was then uh, uh, either torn down or built around. There's a much more modern one. This is Bolam's Department Store, and this is Sudbury Road. Now, we don't know exactly where on Sudbury Road. Here's Mike Perishow's house. It's somewhere here. 
best we can do. And somewhere here, next to that store, or the one that replaced that store, was the Lake Boone Landing. Fortunately, uh, this shows in a number of other photos so that we can locate things. We can locate buildings and kind of guess where they were. This was a major stop, probably the home port of the Princess. It would pick up people here and ferry them around the lake to a number of locations. So it's somewhere there. Uh, there's no evidence, so we don't know, but it's somewhere there. Now, the reason for this location is this. Here is, here is the lake. I've highlighted it in blue. There's a couple old maps, but they show nicely what we want to show. One, uh, there are two railroads here, honest to God railroads. Uh, this is the Fitchburg Line, which still exists. It's a commuter rail. Here's Acton, Maynard, following the river down. This is the Marlboro Branch uh, down here to this point, and then into Hudson. Uh, there is a, and that's the uh, Fitchburg Line in the 80s. A much, excuse me, a much earlier railroad is this one, Wayland through Sudbury, the Mass Central Line up through here. Notice that the two of them not only meet but cross. If you have biked or walked from the Assabet River Trailhead in Hudson off Wilkins Street, people have done that, about 100 feet west of that is the crossing of where those two railroads were and the abutments are still there. Uh, so, <clears throat> there were stops obviously. Whitman's Crossing here. And the problem with Whitman's Crossing is there is a town of Whitman. And so they decided after a while they better change it from Whitman's Crossing to something else so they called it Lake Boone. And you just saw the Lake Boone sign on Lou Halpern's house. He was able to acquire that. It actually belongs to the Martins at Honeypot. Uh, Ordway's Crossing. Some of us may remember that, depending on what side of the lake you were. But these were the two major uh, routes of transportation for the lake in the old days. Uh, my mother commuted here, I don't know for how long, when she went to school in Boston. Uh, a lot of people commuted in and out of this. Uh, there was a third, there was the electric, uh, which the Concord made it in Hudson. And there's some wonderful old pictures, but I suspect it played much less a role because it wasn't that close. And it was somewhat later, 1901 on for a while. Here is Whitman's Crossing, but I think that's actually called Lake Boone there. But I don't know if you recognize where we are. This is Barton Road. This is Sudbury Road. Okay? This is Track Road now over here. Here is the river. And the Sudbury Road Bridge is just off to your left. See where we are? Okay. Uh, if you've forgotten, you can ask this gal here. <laughs> OK, on the Mass Central line, which for folks on the southern side, lakeside area, uh, they would have taken Ordway's uh, station on the Mass Central. This is Parmenter Road. This house still exists, but it's completely behind trees. So that was a pointless to uh, the O'Neill house. Pointless to uh, take a picture, but a wonderful old house. Well, okay, back to what uh, will become uh, Hanson's Beach. George Bolam, we mentioned it was Bolam's store. Uh, on July 29th of 1934, he was 90, and it just so happens that July 28th, Phil Hanson got married. And Phil Hansen is the one who really established Hansen's Beach that many of us came to 
know quite well. This is an early picture. I've got several pictures here of the old Hanson's Beach. If you went Red Cross swimming, how many of us learned to swim in the old days? It is where I learned not how to dive. I was very uh, afraid of diving. And whoever it was finally just said, the hell with it, grabbed me by my ankles, held me out over and let go. <laughs> Took me a long time to get over that. Yeesh. But at any rate, the store and the changing house, Sudbury Road is over here to your right. That's who we are now. And actually, I think, uh, and it must have been Mike, quite understandably, has put up a fence here so that you really can't see it. So this was a year or two ago. On the bathhouse was an enormous sign, huge. This is in two pieces uh, because the sign is about five feet high and at least 12 feet long on two by fours and this is a metal covering. It must weigh a thousand pounds. How glad they ever moved it, I don't know. And it's in his garage. So that's why I took it in two pieces. Well, things really cooked along in the 30s. I have a feeling for kids looking at this years from now are going to say, what the hell is Telcon? <laughs> My guess is it was telephone connection available, <coughs> something like that. Another old picture, uh, my guess is 30s, based on the uh, car. People know where we are, I hope. This is Sudbury Road and Pine Point Road here now. And you may recognize it that way. Sudbury Road, <coughs> Pine Point. For many years run uh, after Phil Hansen by Bob Rooney as a private beach A lot of swimming went on there, mostly under the aegis of the uh, Red Cross. They were for not only kids, but adults. This was uh, 36. Constant reference, and in the old days, in those articles that I mentioned, the um, Lake Boone notes in the paper, they listed the people in the program, the kids. And they were always having uh, contests and so forth. It was a big deal. It was really a uh, highlight of the summer at the lake. This has got to be 50s. Check out those bathing suits. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm in here somewhere. But it I mean, there were hundreds of kids. I mean, it was incredible. They came from all over. And they came not just from the lake. They came from everywhere. Phil Hansen was an entrepreneurial sort. Because in addition to the uh, store and the beach, which was very successful, uh, he opened a garage across the street. It was a repair garage. This is 1946, shortly after the war. And he sold cars. A little ironic, he sold the Hudson car in Stowe. <laughs> Anybody remember what the uh, jingle, the slogan was for the Hudson? No car buffs here. The only car step down. you stepped down into. Because when you got in, the, the chassis was somewhat lower. Which was great to get in. You what? What? Marika, what happened to it? It's probably worth a fortune now. It's gone. Oh, boy. Well, he sold not only these, but another car you don't hear much of anymore, the Willys Jeep. And there's Phil on the right. And if you're wondering exactly where this was, here is the thing again. And here's the garage across Sudbury Road, just about where Lakewood Ave takes off. 
Okay, Phil uh, had a long life, lasted until uh, 1985. Okay, uh, but for the old days, and I keep, hate to keep saying that, but for the earlier days, the Labor Day races were the high point of the summer. And the summer was the, the season. There really wasn't a winter season. It was the summer. And in 1950, thousands participated in the three-day holiday program. Saturday afternoon, field events. Many of them held at the uh, Association Hall. Costume ball for roller skaters Saturday night. We'll get to that. Motorboat parade Sunday afternoon. Pop concert. Dance Sunday night. And as we will all remember who did it, water and canoe races Monday morning starting at 9 o'clock. And damn, it was cold every Labor Day Sunday, uh, Monday morning. And they lasted three hours. The preparations were made. As soon as they were over, you were bundled into the car. The car was packed. The cottage was locked. And you gone. That was the season. Because Tuesday, in our day, you went back to school. None of this foolishness of uh, August or whatever. But thousands. Well, here we are in the 60s. Hundreds. <laughs> this year, This year, for those of us who were there, it was great. It was very, I'm not sure what the word is. I'll say depressing, but that's a judgment word. There were just very few. And I will say, standing down here during the swimming races, people were out there water skiing. Drifting along, doing stuff. Never would have seen that in the old days. Everybody would have been here and in a race. The notion of community that existed in those days, it, it doesn't exist now. It's just very, very different. Okay, moving on. Here's the famous Twilight Club, about which uh, much has been written. Ah. Uh, Lou Halpern in the back, who I've mentioned before, he and Alan put together the two uh, books on Lake Boone, which I hope everybody is aware of and has, the Images of America series. Uh, and I tried to take only a few because you can see them in here. I tried to get other pictures you might not have seen. If you haven't seen them, take a look at them later. They're wonderful. Mo they're all pictures with very brief captions, but... Hit the highlights. Here we are with the princess. <clears throat> These clubs, and we have a lot more to say about clubs here in a moment. This was the Twilight Club. Uh, it's 25 years old, 1930. Uh, Subtract down. Uh, 1905. Very early. Very early. It's long gone. Shirley Birchfield and uh, Wes Fisher's spot uh, as you're entering into the Narrows. But in 1911, five, six years after it started, a group of people got together uh, and figured, oh boy, subscription, entertain uh, the association is to be incorporated under the name of the Lake Boone Irish, I'm sorry, Catholic Association. <laughs> And they built a hall. And anybody who's my vintage or more uh, may very well remember this either by going to church here on a Sunday morning or the running races, which at least in the 50s and 60s were out in the back. This is a much very early. This building would open. There were these uh, uh, shutters that would open up, and it was essentially an open air operation. Uh, and it was hot. Uh, they had a meeting, 
And uh, the, let's see, there was Parker Osborne, McKenzie, O'Connell, Ahern, Clark, Hennessy, Hughes, Ahern, Irwin, Welch. Do we see a pattern here? I don't know how Sarcia got in there. At any rate, that building was out behind what was called the Lester and Surrey, Barbara Clancy's place here, uh, on off Barton Road. Actually, almost directly across the street from uh, what was the Twilight Club. Speaking of clubs, in reading through the, uh, and I read all the newspapers, uh, I kept coming up with various clubs. Now, some were, were legitimate, and I don't mean the others weren't, but they were clubs that actually uh, bought a building and had it as a club building. Others, I suspect, were clubs from wherever they came from. They came out as a group, but were mentioned. And I think I got most of them. Uh, some didn't last very long. Uh, others lasted quite a long time. Uh, a group from Chelsea. Um, it's very interesting reading through because a lot of these Lake Boone notes tell you where people were from. Uh, Dorchester, South Boston, Somerville, Cambridge, and so forth. Nobody came from south of Boston, hmm. from like down Braintree or Quincy or, or any of that area, or even north. It was all very much uh, uh, you can just see the migration out, and I suspect uh, in these days, and this is the turn of the century, we were in the Nina days. Anybody remember that acronym? Any historians? Nina, no Irish need apply. And I suspect it was a very clannish uh, sort of thing, and it had an awful lot to do with the settlement of the lake. What about Worcester? Then not a whole lot. Um, well, I, I shouldn't say that, but uh, a lot of these notes, and they were 20 or 30 in, in every issue, mentioned where people were from. Okay, well, this club, the Middlesex, I don't know where they were, but it was obviously a big club. Presumably, they had their own building somewhere. Clubs were a problem, and not necessarily these, but clubs tended to get a little raucous, <laughs> kind of like this crowd out here. So uh, caused a lot of problems. We're going to get to uh, uh, Monaghan's here quick if I d keep stop talking here. But this is a deed on Lakeside as late as 1948. This last paragraph, let me zip it out quick. No dwelling. Uh, this is on an individual parcel. Lands covered with this, nor any habitation erected or maintained shall be used for or by clubs, either male or female, or for any other purpose. They specifically wrote into the deeds. No clubs. Oh, goofy things happen. Some young kid uh, started flying through the narrows, just got his pilot's license, started flying through the narrows. This is late 30s. What he didn't realize, which no longer exists, is there was a power line <laughs> across the narrows. Zip! Whoosh, went right in. My guess is he... Uh, uh, didn't keep his license very long. He jumped out before the plane sank. Okay, here we are on the uh, uh, west side of the first basin uh, in the uh, Parker country. Uh, and J.E. Parker, it seems to me, uh, was uh, probably one of the very first developers uh, of housing on the lake. And uh, Mr. Parker uh, had an ice business. That's the east side. I'm, the east side. You're right. Uh, and here's the, uh, what do you want to say, not elevator? Hoist. Hoist to get the ice up. And there were a number of ice houses around. This has to be, if we're right, one of the first buildings on the lake, long before, not long, but before uh, Pine Point in the 1890s. Uh, this is, Dodge, you'll appreciate this, this is a picture of what we believe to be the Lincoln Club. 
and uh, no one knows this now, but you do the site. Uh, Parker's had an awful lot of cottages down through here. Here's Sudbury Road. Here's the main Parker homestead, you know, the beautiful white uh, house. And some of these roads. Uh, but now the Stowe Beach is here. And that's where the uh, Lincoln Club was located. Late 70s, uh, uh, a significant amount was donated, and the town bought uh, many of those cottages, much of that land, and developed the Stowe Town Beach. This is just before, this is 77, picture from the paper, and that's what it looks like now. Really a very nice job uh, that's done here. Okay, back, you remember, saw this before. Here is this road here. This was before the lake got expanded. We were just looking along here a minute ago. Uh, this is a very interesting picture because this is what I think is the gully where that road crossed before the lake was expanded. And looking in this direction, we're at the bottom end of the first basin. This would go over towards Kingland Road and then out to Sudbury Road. Oh, screwball things happen from time to time. Anybody remember the jellyfish? We had at least... Crass Pentecosta, yes. Um, did you really? Wow. Who's this guy? Oh. Oh, Hawks. Oh, that's him. Yes. Uh, very cute. They came. They didn't last all that long. We had an outbreak in 60 and in 90. Uh, may have been more. They're very unusual. They're about the size of a dime. Hundreds or thousands, and they last uh, a week or two, a couple weeks, something like that. Um, and I, re I distinctly remember one here and an outbreak there off Halleck Point. Okay, moving on. Uh, the town boundary. Here was the original town boundary in black and in red uh, dashes. Uh, what that did, because the lake was only this big originally, what that did when they backed up the lake is this piece here was on the Hudson side. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, on the Stowe side, but piece of Hudson. And over here, uh, a piece of Stowe on the Hudson side. So, and when we were kids, uh, we, being right here, uh, everything was Hudson. So it was just one of these awkward sort of things. Got started in 65 talking about it, and of course nothing happens fast. Uh, so in 77, finally got an article going. And in 79, it became a reality. And uh, I know you can't see this, but this is sort of the official map here. So this section, which is on the, I've tried to enlarge it a little bit. Uh, here is the, narrow, the, the narrows are up here. Here is the opening of the second basin. Here is the line. And these cottages here, because the, the uh, boundary was then moved to run down the middle of the lake, which made a lot of sense, put these houses here uh, back on the Stowe side legally as well as in reality. And I think this is, runs almost through your, your house, doesn't it, Teresa? Right, right close to you. Uh, and one of these houses, I think this one was uh, Junior Salusi's house. He had a summer house there. Okay, on the uh, other end, here is the line. So all of these houses here, which were on the Stowe side but in Hudson, became legally on Hudson. And it came right through our house, <laughs> as luck would have it. Okay, there is a slight vestige of those days. Uh, I think, Kathy, your house is over here. This is... Uh, it's my house over there. On the, on the left? Yeah. yeah behind the trees here. And there are the three pines. Here is this sort of dead one, two, one, two over. You see this, 
And that's the old town boundary. <laughs> About ready to slip into the lake as soon as those uh, things give way. Okay, while we're here, and that's here, you see the boundary now runs down this way. Uh, area over here becomes important. Uh, originally Canning's Grove, it was a big deal in those days. Uh, this is 1911. And uh, to give you an idea how big, uh, of the Grange uh, had a picnic, 500 people. They all got there pretty much by uh, boat. Just north of that was Matthew Boone Park. This is a map, I guess, from the 50s. I actually have this map. You can take a look at it. And uh, right there and... In the 20s, it was uh, a big deal. You could cottages for families only from three to 400. Price is reasonable. Okay, second basin. We're going to speed up here. Uh, this is a very interesting map. Here's the second basin. We're kind of looking. This will be Lakeside here. This is Monahan's Cove. Here is the Narrows to the third basin on the left. Uh, this is a very interesting map because it lists names of cottages. Boy, was that helpful. This was a map made by our uncle for a uh, family reunion back in 82, and he remembered what it was like in 08 when grandfather came and, and uh, bought here. Okay, well, this is Lakeside. Here's an early map of Lakeside. Lower Main Street is here. Monaghan's Cove. And somebody had a straight edge, but not much of a sense of topography. <laughs> and this wasn't the worst place for lot problems. That was 1909. Here it is in 21. They filled it out. Put all of this nonsense in here. Uh, this is Rock Avenue. This is Lakeside. And Gately is, is to be over here. This was much before that. Um, up here on uh, County Road, Old Main Street, is this. Can you envision Lower Main Street and Rock Ave now, where we are? Ah, everybody says the general store. Don't forget. Between the, the Klein Farm in 1947 and when the general store was built was Sam's Provisions. Uh, very interesting story. Here's Sam, uh, his brother Henry, uh, and this is Father Joseph. Joseph was a, uh, ran a deli in uh, Cambridge, and uh, our father sold coffee, sold them to him, and, and so we sort of knew them. Uh, but he, this is a Quonset hut. God, how many now remember the Quonset huts? Yes. The girl was named Sis, that's their sister. Yes. They had a place in Cambridge, a meat store in Cambridge. Yes, definitely did. And that's what's there now. Okay, back on to uh, the lake. Two very early houses. This one is gone. This one is still here. And this is my plea for pictures early pictures. Thank God our uncle who did that colored map you just saw had a lot of pictures and he included it in the history. And dates. That was a very early picture. The house that you saw on the left, they were identical. Uh, the one on the left got moved. Uh, they built this house. This house uh, was the family house. This is still here. This is the boathouse. Uh, this burnt in 17, so we can date stuff. Somewhere along the line, we had a screwball aunt, you'll remember. And this was Butler's Landing. Mother was a butler. Uh, the copper lantern uh, was in the boathouse for some short period of time. And I think you will probably remember this. Remember those two houses I showed you a moment ago, identical? This one is gone. On the right, it was called the Bellevue. That still exists as the core of the house that Don Hawks 
lived in next to us. Jim Stacy is in that house now. Just down the street is this wonderful building. Looks immense. It's the lens. This is the Highland. If you come down Rock Ave, if any of you know that area, and come down Rock Ave and keep going straight instead of turning onto Lakeside, you almost run into this house. Just to the left is the right of way, which is critical because Lakeside was, uh, the Lakeside stop was on that right of way. Why? Well, partly for people here. However, up on the flat was a major ball field. Those were big things in those days, both at Canning's Grove and here. And that's what they really came for was the ball field. That's what kept the launch going. Here it looks now. That's the red house you just saw. So the uh, right of way is here. And you see all these canoes for people who are not exactly on the lake itself. Whoa! Don't you wish this happened? I got to speed up, folks, so bear with me. Here's Monaghan's Cove. This is the second basin. Lakeside is supposed to be up here. This was a prospectus for the lakeside improvement. Here was the bungalow they were going to build on the lakeside, right at the bend. But we got a lodge. This was the famous Lake Boone Lodge. I think the only real hotel we had went from 23 to 27, burnt in 27. Uh, no longer there, obviously. Uh, this is a picture. I think this is a picture from Uncle. I think this is ice. Here's the lodge. This still exists. This one still exists. These others uh, do not. This is the Chasen house, Jennifer Chasen. Okay, if this map looks a little busy, that's purposely, because this indeed was the happening. God, is that out of focus that bad? Okay, here's Monaghan's Cove. Real quick, Lake Boone Lodge, you just saw it. Around the corner was the uh, Tuohy's had a pharmacy, uh, the dance hall and uh, rink. Monaghan's here, Cove Landing, the Sunbeam Cottage, Breeze Inn. Nikki, did she make it tonight? Ah, in the back. Uh, the Malta cottages, some of us remember those tiny little lots that still exist on uh, Worcester Ave, between Worcester and uh, Hunter. And then the Oakmore development we now know as East Ave and Lake Boone Ave, or West Ave, I guess it is. Okay, standing, looking across, uh, Tui's actually had a pharmacy. You might remember Tui's from uptown, where Hudson Appliance is now on the corner of Main and Broad Street. He actually had a uh, store. Remember Mother talking about that? You could actually go right up to it. Get your oxycodone, I guess, without getting out of the boat. <laughs> it was one of these. Hard to tell. I've tried the deeds, but lots have changed. As in building lots. Hard to follow. Okay. Here is Monaghan's Cove. Here, the roller skating rink. Enormous building it was. Just peeking out from behind here is Monaghan's. This is Temple and Worcester. Judging from the car, probably the 50s. Same area. This is now Chuck Kunovich and uh, Todd Billings' house. Monaghan's Landing, this sign hung on the corner of Main Street. Uh, thank God John and Mary McGrath grabbed that before it went off to the dump. It's in their cellar. Monaghan's was a big deal starting in the 20s. All kinds of things happened here. I've been told, I do not know. <laughs> Activities, unspeakable things happened here. I saw Rodney Dangerfield there in July of 4th, about, I don't know, early 60s or so. Before we get famous, my brother and I were over there. See what I mean? Yeah. Unspeakable! <laughs> <laughs> we used to go to a skate rink, my sister and I, and Monaghan, we used to go to Monaghan before we had a driver's license. We'd roll over and stand on top of the cars and look in the window. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and I have to tell you folks, you may not know Bill Butler, no relation. <laughs> wow, glad I didn't live in those days. Okay, there were all kinds of problems that some of you may know, but people came from everywhere. Uh, I taught in Boston for years. Where are you from? Hudson. Oh, Monahans. Everybody knew about it. It was just, just remarkable. Uh, we have very few pictures. This is one out of the paper. Not good. 72. Uh, it ran into troubles in the late 70s. Some of you may remember George. Uh, this is 78. Early 80s, they tried to reopen. Uh, stays closed. That pretty much is the end of it. The rink next door, I'm going to speed up here. Uh, the roller skating rink was a big deal and drew from all over. Roller skating in the 50s and 60s was the thing to do. Uh, some of you may remember Holly Piddick. Uh, lived on Main Street, right where uh, Lakeside entered. Still, that house is still there. It's the uh, stucco house. And Franny O'Connell, as in O'Connell Way off uh, Barton Road. People were somewhat astounded when she married Henry Goldman. Uh, here is the rink in its later days, 74. Went in and uh, pretty much the end of it. A very distinguished history. The sunbeam, uh, this is the sign for the sunbeam. There is the cottage for the Sunbeam. Mary Kelly owns it now. Anybody recognize? Other than you, Nikki. Oh, come on. Sure. Same footprint. Building's tough. Okay. Uh, 20th Century Club. Big club owned their own building uh, off Worcester. Just up Worcester a little bit were these two houses which still exist pretty much in their same format. Lakeview and Pine Ridge. Okay, we're getting close, folks. Funny little building here. Pat Soren's place, but little house here with a chimney on the second. Oh, another funny little house with a chimney. Oh, another one. With a chimney, what's going on here? Saunas. Saunas. A lot of uh, Finnish folk uh, from Maynard especially came, brought the custom. And these were, uh, uh, you heated the rocks, created the steam, sweated like crazy, ran out and did funny things. <laughs> okay. Uh, Larry, Larry Cattell, Alan's father, drew this in 1910. Uh, draw your attention to uh, the floating island. Uh, this picture was in 05. Ten years. <laughs> Where do we get these people? Mother remembers going out on this when she was a kid. She was born in seven, so it was somewhere in the teens, and uh, walking around getting uh, blueberries. And it has been falling apart ever since. <laughs> Anybody know where this is? Right here, right up here. Uh, you can only really get there by canoe or a kayak, uh, but it's right in here. And this is just about where Old County and Maine come together. Yes. Yeah. All of this land in through here, and fortunately, fortunately, it is going to remain in the family. As opposed to, you know what would happen. 
Okay. Okay, uh, I'm not going to say very much about this. You know we've had a weed problem. Uh, in the early 50s and 60s, you could spray. Weed control was a big thing. Anybody know the answer to that question? Sixty-two, same year. And of course, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring was the, uh, a lot of people look at it, it wasn't very well written, but it was a huge impact, if you read it, uh, about the uh, impact of pesticides on the environment. So, uh, very quickly, people complained about sodium arsenite and all the, the copper-based stuff and all the nasties that we were putting into the water. So. Uh, the other option, of course, was a weed cutting machine. <laughs> well, well, we bought one, and they looked like this. It uh, had paddle wheels, so you didn't get hung up. It had a uh, sickle bar with agricultural teeth on it. It went down and cut it off. Uh, that worked very well. The real problem in those days was the uh, picking up the cuttings because as we rather quickly discovered, they just reproduce. Right. When they cut off, they spread around. When they sink, they re-root. Right. And here was the guy, yes, Bill, here was the guy, the, the salesman, who was this geeky guy? <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Must have been some out-of-work teacher who didn't have anything better to do in the summer. We still use these machines. In fact, this one is owned by the refuge. Right. I drive that. Aha! The big improvement was now they're able to pick up the cuttings. In those days, uh, they hadn't developed that technology yet. Stumps, well, not hard to see why. Uh, almost done. Uh, there were two organizations developed uh, around the lake one of which was the Lake Boone, Improvement Associ uh, Lake Boone Improvement Association. And this is 1921. Uh, these people, uh, Louis Levine, Earl Chrysler, uh, appear here in a moment again, and Edward J. Butler. Whoops, not your butler. Oh, no. This was uh, grandfather. And they were all Boston people. Uh, that, of course, through various iterations, became the, the association, Lake Boone Association. And then in the early 40s, uh, we developed a uh, legal entity, uh, the Lake Boone Commission, Earl Chrysler, William Parker, and Louis Levine uh, were the three uh, initial. Okay, uh, in 1922, when a cottage camp costing but $4.20 to build and rented for $3.50, you could do pretty well. <laughs> Hence, what happened is you had a lot of clubs. That was part of the problem in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Well, in 45, a cottage for $2,000 or a home for $2,500. Uh, Ed King. Very familiar name to Pine Point folks. Uh, and of course, everybody complains about taxes. Oh, sorry. Uh, September 20th, so just the other day, 20 Lakeside sold for 570. Uh, Worcester uh, Ave sold for over six. For any of us who've been there for a while and haven't bought or sold property, you become astounded at the appreciation of uh, property. But of course, everybody bitches about taxes. You think you have it hard. In the old days, they had tax problems as well. This is 1906. Bigelow Woodland and five lots. Taxes were a whole $6. Peter Funai, five lots of land at Boone's Pond, 212. And I can tell you, the land he had was uh, on either East Ave or Lake Boone Ave. George Spaulding, Boone's Pond Land, taxes for $2.12. Did you guys pay it yet? <laughs> wow. 
Okay, we are just about there. Now, you can read that at your leisure. I have two incontrovertib incontrovertible evidences of climate change. Ready? Here's one. We have our own honest to God flamingo. <laughs> And if that won't convince you because birds can fly, and you know, they're, they're mobile, we have a somewhat more sedentary piece of evidence. Palm trees. <laughs> the other thing that I brought is a canoe back. Anybody remember real wooden canoes in the old days? You didn't sit on seats. You sat at the bottom and you needed a back to rest yourself against. Yeah. This one, sunbeam on the back. Mary Kelly's place right on, almost in the corner of Worcester and uh, Temple. The real honest to God canoe back. So again, please, any artifacts, not just pictures, anything. We have trophies, we have ribbons, and we've got some things, but anything you have, uh, we would love to either have or have copies of. So, thank you again. Thank you. Okay, let's get this shit out of here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, so oh, wait. For those of you that may want to see some of this firsthand, we are sponsoring another walkathon. Uh, walking around the lake, it's about 5.2 miles. We post a few historical and environmental signs, and it's going to be held on Saturday, October 17th, sponsored by the Lake Moon Association. It starts at noon.